a mystical experience or a religious experience. For Ramachandran, John's story is the basis of one of his most intriguing and controversial theories. Could there be a specialized area of the brain that drives human beings to seek religion? A few years ago, the popular press inaccurately quoted me as having claimed that there is a God center or a G-spot in the temporal lobes. And now, this is complete nonsense. There is no specific area in the temporal lobe concerned with God. But it's possible there are parts of the temporal lobes whose activity is somehow conducive to religious belief. Now, this seems unlikely, but it might be true. Now, why might we have neural machinery in the temporal lobes for belief in religion? Well, belief in religion is widespread. Every tribe, every society has some form of religious worship. And maybe the reason it evolved, if it did evolve, is that it is conducive to the stability of society. And this may be easiest if you believe in some sort of supreme being. And that may be one reason why religious sentiments evolved in the brain. The only reason I probably would get rid of the seizures and epilepsy, because I've never even seen them, is because of my family, because of him. I would, I would keep them for those visions because of the way I see the world falling into place and things like that. It's a wild little place to, to be stuck in there. It also seems like a key. And right now I haven't learned how to get to the key without, use the key without those seizures. If I was told that I'd never have a chance to have that key again, sorry, I'm going to hold on to that thing. Just because some patients with temporal lobe seizures have intense religious experiences, this does not in any way invalidate that experience for that patient. In fact, it can very often enrich the patient's life enormously and it poses a dilemma very often for the physician because what right do we have to treat the patient with medication or with surgery, thereby in some instances depriving him of these valuable experiences. To me, the exciting thing is that subjects like God and religion can now be actually addressed by us scientists. We can begin to ask questions about religion and God and begin to approach these questions by listening to these patients, by talking with them, and by studying them. It's a tragic irony that today's breakthroughs in our understanding of the human brain are made possible by the misfortune of brain injury. For centuries, philosophers have labored to understand God, consciousness, and the mysteries of human nature. Now, perhaps science will have its chance.